Attorney John Deaton confirms he's going to run against corrupt Elizabeth Warren for the Senate seat in the state of Massachusetts. This is big, folks. And crypto advocacy group, the Chamber of Digital Commerce, calls on the Senate banking chair not to support Elizabeth Warren's AML bill. And Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse goes on Bloomberg and says he is ready for an XRP spot ETF. We're going to break this down and much more. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, today Tether minted 1 billion USDT and I've often shared this data with you over time. And we usually see the market move as a result because they're minting based on investors looking to invest in the crypto market via the stablecoin. So we could see Bitcoin go up another leg, maybe to 57,000, maybe to 60,000. You know, it's hard to predict what it's going to do and the exact price, but that could be possible. And we're seeing all coins are benefiting from Bitcoin's liquidity. Ethereum hit $3,000 today, and we're seeing different altcoins pop off. So we're having a mini alt season. Um, this is just short-term moves that I'm talking about. Macro level, I'm expecting new all-time highs later this year, as well as blow off top euphoria phase in 2025. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe Bitcoin has another leg up that it's going to pump, and then we see $60,000. Nevertheless, have a strategy if you're going to take profits here from a short-term swing trade standpoint, or you're going to wait for it to pull back and buy the dips, right? Dollar cost average. That is what I'm anticipating. So we'll see what Bitcoin does next. Now, folks, the big news of the day, attorney John Deaton confirmed he is running against corrupt Elizabeth Warren for this Massachusetts Senate seat. And of course, John has been a big champion for crypto, fighting on behalf of uh, retail investors and for the little guy, right? And if you read his book, you know his past. He doesn't come from some rich family. He's not some major politician like Elizabeth Warren. He hasn't been you know, cuddling up to the banks like Elizabeth Warren. So he's taking on uh, a giant here, but I think he can win. And here's what he tweeted out with his video promoting his run. He said, first, it was schoolyard bullies, then it was greedy corporations and the SEC, and now I am taking on the Washington elites. We know Elizabeth Warren is a champion for big government and the elites. John Deaton is a champion for the common man. And he has his website here, johndeatonforsenate.com. So be sure to go check it out. You can donate. Today, I donated to John. I posted a screenshot of my donation receipt and I will continue to donate to him. Um, so there are questions from folks about, will he accept cryptocurrencies? And here, Eleanor Terrida Fox Business confirmed that John said, uh, you will be able to donate directly to him via his, the, your Coinbase account. So he's still working on that, You know, if you wanna donate via cryptocurrency. So he's gonna have that set up. But folks, this is a huge day. And I know some are going to say, hey, John doesn't stand a chance because Elizabeth Warren has so much capital and, and the notoriety and the name and so forth. That's true, but I think John stands a strong chance. Here's why. You have the macro factor, and that is the Biden administration and Democrats are not in a good spot right now. I think whether you're a Democrat or Republican, you can agree on that. That doesn't mean that I'm telling you not to vote for Democrat or, or you know, should only vote for Republican. I'm just stating the facts. The way the country is right now, what's going on at the border, and many other things, the economy, inflation, and so forth, are not good for the Biden administration and the Democrats. So you have that factor that people are going to want change. They're going to be like, you know what? I'm tired of these people, right? And that happens. Look, that happens on the Republican side, too. I've seen it. And then John, he is going to have crypto investors backing him. And that's going to be a lot of millions of people who we saw that the presidential candidates like Vivek and Ron DeSantis and so forth were pandering to uh, because there's a large group of people who care about crypto. It may not be the top ballot issue, but it may be in the top 10 for them, possibly the top five for many, right? So there's going to be a lot of voters who are going to be energized. And because Elizabeth Warren has positioned herself as the anti-crypto army leader, Versus, you know, doing some common sense thing and saying, hey, look, um, I'm not against you guys. I'm for innovation and I want to protect investors. 
right? That would have been the common sense path. But we know she's like, oh, anti-crypto. And she sends questions and answers to Gary Genser ahead of hearing. And she's spreading lies, right? We've seen it with the Wall Street Journal Hamas uh, data and information. The Treasury debunked it. So she will flat out lie. So everybody in crypto pretty much hates her. So we're going to have a lot of voters who are going to be riled up and say, you know what? We're not putting up. We're going to go vote, right? And then you have the campaign donations from crypto companies. There's a huge war chest being built by many like Coinbase, Ripple, and others. And you got some packs that have money and they will be ready to give it to John. So I think John stands a good chance. Now, don't get me wrong. He'll be in for a battle and we're going to have to support him. We're going to have to donate. We're going to have to amplify content. I'm ready to do my part. And uh, on this podcast, I'm going to cover it, of course, and and then cover it on the newsletter and much more. So um it's real. It's a really great day, guys. That John is doing this, and much respect to him because it takes balls to go up against someone like Elizabeth Warren when you are not already a politician. You, you know, he's he's in for a battle, but John's a fighter. Once again, read his book. He, the background that this man comes from, it's it's not some uh, pleasant, uh, you know, upper middle class or upper class, uh, you know, one percent uh, 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 environment. That's not where he comes from. Um, so. We, we got to support John, guys. And like I said, you know, go to his website and donate. And he also created a new profile on Twitter X called Deaton for or at Deaton for Senate. So be sure to follow him on that. Now, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse was on Bloomberg. And we're going to talk about the XRP ETF a little later in the podcast. But he highlighted that John Deaton was running against Elizabeth Warren. And one of the quotes he gave was that many politicians don't really understand how crypto works. And he was really highlighting Elizabeth Warren. You know, she's using false information and all these things. Great to see Brad highlighting that. And here we got the Chamber of Digital Commerce, uh, which is a crypto advocacy group calling on the Senate banking chair not to support Elizabeth Warren's AML bill. The Chamber of Digital Commerce claims Senators Elizabeth Warren and Sherrod Brown were trying to kill the entire industry with the Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act. Now, folks, there's not necessarily a problem with AML and KYC. We see different companies enact those things. We see that uh, overseas, they, they've enacted these things. The problem is Elizabeth Warren will throw in a ton of bad stuff with that and you know brand it as, this is to protect you. This is KYC. This is AML. But that already exists. But they're trying to do it in places it can't be done because it's code. It's DeFi, right? So they were trying to essentially kill the asset class. It's, it's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Here's this beautiful bill. It's, you know, it's so we know who's transacting and so forth. But the devil is in the details. And the devil, of course, is Elizabeth Warren. A quick word from our sponsor, folks, and that is Uphold. Uphold is a great platform I've been using since 2018. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies. They're available in over 150 countries. You can also trade precious metals on this platform, gold, silver, palladium, platinum. They have stable coins and they support a lot of uh, different fiat currencies. They have a great app. It's easy to use. And best of all, they are fully reserved. So you can trust this platform. You can go review their transparency reports. They don't commingle or lend out your funds. Once again, I've been using this platform for years and I've interviewed the CEO, CFO, and many folks. So if you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please check out the link in the description. Now, as mentioned, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse went on Bloomberg and he tweeted out about this. Here's what he tweeted. Uh, he said he ran through a lot with the um, interviewer this morning, why we've been forced to rely on court decisions, not sound policy for regulatory clarity in the U.S., a potential XRP ETF, Ripple's recent acquisition of standard custody, and why Ripple continues to take a compliance first mindset. So let me play a clip here of what he had to say about the XRP ETF. So you would welcome an XRP ETF then? We would certainly welcome it. And I think it's inevitable that there'll be, you know, multiple ETFs around different uh, tokens. I think you'll even see ETFs potentially around baskets that also, I think, further diversify that risk. Uh, are you in talks with the largest issuers, particularly BlackRock, to get this done? Well, uh, I'm not going to comment on that. I know BlackRock has said some things publicly. Uh, you know, we think it makes sense for the XRP community overall. So, of course, I think we see the writing on the wall that different altcoins will have ETFs, you know, Ethereum and, and XRP and Cardano and so forth. And as Brad said, you're going to have baskets of, of all coins. Uh, it could be the top five or the top 10, and um, those will be in ETFs. That's what's coming and all types of different financial products. 
the, the challenges in the immediate, you know, Gary, Gary Genser, um, we'll see what he does with the Ethereum ETF. And of course, Ripple is still battling the SEC in, in court. The, the SEC could totally block an XRP ETF uh, because of that lawsuit. So we're hoping for a resolution with that lawsuit and we'll see how things go. Now, it's it's not a question of if, it's just a matter of when. And that could happen in 2025, the XRP ETF that is. So exciting times ahead, my friends. Now we got news here. Hack VC closes oversubscribed $150 million fund for crypto startups. So uh, this is a venture capital firm. And we're just seeing capital flowing in from all directions. A lot of firms are popping up that are crypto specific, and they're investing in both the coins as well as the companies building the infrastructure of the market. So the venture capital firm uh, Hack VC has raised $150 million to invest in early stage Web3 companies. Hack VC's vice president of finance, Jigar Shah, said in a post on X that the round was oversubscribed, meaning the firm raised more funds than intended. Crypto venture activity appears to be on a continued upswing as prices of major cryptocurrencies test highs not seen in years. So that's obvious, right? People see we are back in a bull market. They see that we're going to uh, be out of the quantitative tightening cycle and we're going to be back in QE cycle. Money's going to get cheaper as rates get cut down and they're going to start the money printer again. And what happens? That increases global liquidity and asset prices rise. It's the same thing over and over. Bo boom and bust cycles, folks. So get ready for another boom cycle. I'm not saying it's starting next month. I'm not saying it's starting six months from now. It's going to take some time, but we see what's on the horizon, right? Versus what we saw at the end of 2021 and um, how things, you know, the Fed said, we're going to raise rates and all that. And then the QT cycle started where things started going down. Asset prices started going down. Now asset prices are going back up. So, uh, very, very interesting times. So far, Hack VC's major thesis has been modular infrastructure. The firm's managing partner, Alexander Pack, told BlockWorks, modular software breaks larger structures into smaller specialized pieces. It is also hoping to invest in tokenized real-world assets to build better stablecoins. Founded in 2017, Hack VC is helmed by Ed Roman and Alexander Pack. Roman launched the Hack.Summit Programmer Conference in 2014, which is now supported by HackVC, Pact co-founded crypto venture outlet Dragonfly in 2018. The firm boasts unicorns like the Layer 1 Sioux and the decentralized wireless network Helium developed by Nova Labs in its portfolio, according to its website. The VC shop has been around long enough to see some less successful bets as well. It was an investor in Collapse Projects, Terra, and BlockFi. So, uh, folks, capital keeps coming back, even though they took some losses with Terra Luna and BlockFi. They know, look, there's going to be winners and losers, right? That's part of the investment game. And sometimes you just need one or two uh, big winners, and you may have four or five losers, but the two winners or so, you know, make you a nice return. So that's how you got to approach it as, a, as an investor. Not everything will be a winner, but uh, this is why you diversify. Sure, you don't want to spread yourself too thin, but you diversify and you're going to have winners. Um, it's honestly hard to have a loser necessarily. It all depends on what price you buy in at, of course. If you're buying into pumps in the bull market, you may not have a great return. But if you're buying on the blood on the streets in the bear market, and you're selling the euphoria phase, uh, you could certainly have a nice return. And that's how I've been approaching the market. Now, moving ahead, MetaMask monthly active users nears all-time high over 30 million. MetaMask reported the number of monthly active users has climbed 55% in four months, jumping from 19 million in September to more than 30 million in January. These figures nearly match record highs seen in January 2022, MetaMask said. When it counted 31.7 million monthly active users, Bitcoin and Ether were coming down from their all-time highs at the time and currently trade at comparable levels. So I'm sharing this with you to show that activity is ramping up, right? Once again, we're in the bull market. We're what we'll maybe call phase two. 2023 was phase one and 2025 will be phase three. So great to see uh, you know, these indicators and metrics showing Activities coming back in, capital is being raised by these firms, uh, showing people are turning bullish. Finally, here we got news: Turkey releases first phase digital lira project evaluation report. Folks, every government around the world is exploring uh, CBDCs. 
They're coming. As I've stated many times, the question is, which blockchains and are you holding the tokens for those said blockchains, right? That is the big thing. We don't know, uh, you know, officially from many of these governments, which blockchains you're building on, but uh, it's going to be very interesting. We know Ethereum is one of them. Uh, Algorand, you have the XRP Ledger as well, but uh, we're waiting for official news. So uh, it's going to be very interesting when that news comes in. So the Central Bank of the Republic of Turkey has released an English translation of its report evaluating the first phase of its Central Bank Digital Turkish Lira project or research and development project to develop a Central Bank digital currency. The report was published in Turkish last year, but appeared in English translation on February 19th. The first phase of the project dealt with the digital identity system, digital currency system, abstraction layer, service layer, and wallet. The abstraction layer supports the modularity of the system. The first phase of the project began in 2021, and the CBRT carried out its first trial transactions with the digital Turkish lira in 2022. All parts of the system are independent of others, allowing for easy replacement. The system operates on the digital Turkish Lira collaboration platform that the CBRT operates with the Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey and the Esalan or Aselsan and Havalsan companies. Wow, that's a mouthful. Uh, the digital Turkish Lira was designed as an intermediated retail CBDC wholesale payments were studied in a separate process. The Turkish CBDC promises a high degree of interoperability and, and complementarity. Um, now, folks, I, I know some of you may be confused by the lingo here where you have wholesale versus retail. Retail, of course, being uh, the ability to use the CBDC uh, to buy things. And, and the wholesale is more for uh, movements uh, behind the scenes where like, uh, yeah, banks moving large sums of money and between the government and much more and, and cross-border payments and so forth. So both are being tested, but look what's happening, folks. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure they want to get this going because Turkey is one of the countries that is suffering from hyperinflation and really bad economics. So folks, there's a lot of benefits to these CBDCs, but of course, a lot of scary things. I've seen different people talk about, you know, having these CBDCs have expiration dates. You have to use the money at a certain point. So it takes away a lot of freedom. And of course, you know, how will they track this and use it? Could they use it against you, right? Or will there be guardrails in place? And that's the scary part because it may not happen now. It could happen 50 years from now where the technology is used against people and, uh, you know, who you vote for or what you like or you don't like. Could, you know, they could control your money as a result. So um, I'm, I'm not trying to spread fear, but it is a so it is something we have to be concerned about and we have to watch it closely. And if it smells fishy, we got to fight back. Now, the good things is, is we have alternatives with different cryptocurrencies and stable coins. So, um, you know, we have options and, and the genie is out of the bottle where almost anyone can create a token now. So uh, it's it's interesting times, um, you know, once again, a lot of benefits, but also we got to watch out for the pitfalls because human nature is still at play here, regardless of if the technology changes. Uh, humans will be humans, folks. We've seen it throughout history, right? Uh, well, that's the news, folks. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Leave a five-star rating on the podcast platforms. Folks, please, I ask that you please support the podcast by subscribing to my free email newsletter link in the description. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, as well as Twitter X, all free methods. I'm not asking you to buy anything. I'm not asking you to, to, to pay anything. I'm just asking you to click a follow and subscribe button. It really supports the podcast. It really helps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you all. And I'll talk to you all later.